Free Software, Free Society ist äh, einer der Titel von Richard Stallman. Wir haben sehr viele Vorträge unter diesem Titel gehalten, ein Paper geschrieben, das genauso heißt. Ich werde jetzt für den Rest des Vortrages auf Englisch switchen, weil das auch auf äh, Video aufgezeichnet wird und ich denke, das ist im Allgemeinen sinnvoller, sowas auf Englisch zu halten. Okay, welcome to my talk. I'm introducing you to the world of free software and uh, there is a common misunderstanding. The word free does not refer to free as in beer, as in price or gratis, but to freedom. If you think of freedom, think of freedom of speech. What, what is there in software that gives us freedom and that can take our freedom eventually? Um, I will have this these slides here, and after that I will go on until you start to ask questions. Um, what is software at all? How should we think about it? Um, and knowledge. Well, isn't software just another, another form of knowledge? Uh, how can we say intellectual property, uh, implying that there's something to be owned, and to, to, there's a claim to ownership? Uh, what are market implications of free software? Uh, finally, The Four Freedoms is what uh, the Free Software Foundation under Stallman uh, can look up at GNU.org or FSF.org. Um, yeah, what, what he wrote, wrote in 85 is uh, how software should ideally be. And then there's also the term open source that you will encounter a lot. I will explain a little bit of, about this and uh, this will be done together with licensing. How should we understand software then? Uh, in my point of view and many other people, software is nothing else but a set of instructions you put in some kind of machine, whatever it be, an old piano, a toaster, or even a laptop, and then this thing runs and does something for you. Uh, hence, it could be uh, think, thought of as a cooking receipt or something else. Um, we have freedoms in software. That is, uh, imagine you have, uh, because I think software is an art of uh, work of literature, authorship, that you have a book and you, of course, you read a story and you tell the story to somebody else and that's a totally normal thing to do and in, in this view, our software is similar. So also in copyright, it falls under the same legal category of uh, protection as uh, literature, as a, as a musical piece or as a, a piece of art. Someone who paints it, it has copyright, but you can, of course, repaint him. Um, yeah, this is a side note, I want to come back to the legal things later. Um, the uh, instruction set, I already uh, told you that uh, this is, you, you imagine this piano, you put it in and it just plays. Uh, on the other hand, you have uh, this instruction set, you can say is condensed knowledge. And there's a certain thing about knowledge that is uh, very dependent on information. And information has certain properties, if you think Information can hardly be contained. It has a gaseous consistency. The, the harder you try to compress information, the more easier it will get out. My favorite example for this is the Barbara Streisand effect, when there is a picture of her house on the internet released and she tries to pull this picture from the internet. Of course, because of that, it gets even more well known and widespread. Um, we have information technology as our topic here. And this is what we deal with. We should be aware of it. That source code is, on your, uh, is nothing else but information. Of course, in a software, there's uh, design also. There's artworks, there's sound. But this is not what I'm talking about here. I'm just talking about the program, the, the instruction set. Um, yeah, the, the unique properties I already told you about. Uh, from an economic point of view, knowledge is a positive externality. So think of it like air or something else. If you plant a tree, then everybody has an advantage of this. And from an economic point of view, uh, it's very important to push those positive externalities and to reduce things that harm positive externalities. So if you want a society to prosper, you have to, to really push this forward. Yeah, and we have, uh, software has to be made uh, accessible in a democratic and non-discriminatory way. So the user should be in, in control and not the software in control of the user. Uh, we have uh, intellectual property as an umbrella term. I really hate that term because uh, it, you think of it and then say copyright, patent law, trademarks and other category, categories of law, that they are all the same. It's absolutely not true. Um, 
So the term actually doesn't mean anything and no one should use it. It also implies a claim of ownership that I came up with an idea and I say it's mine and you can't have it, you can't use it. And there's also very often sp spoken about that ideas would be harmed by people spreading them. A piece of music, a melody I just invent is not harmed if I share it to anyone. I might have an interest in gaining of profit, that's understandable, but it's not harmed if someone shares it. Um, monopolies are usually a bad thing in economic school. You learn that very early, so uh, anyone should know that. And then monopoly on a public good is just nothing else but pure evil. Um, software is still generating shitloads of economic value. You can say that uh, <laughs> not, for, not for nothing Bill Gates is still the richest man in the world, I think. Um, however, most of the economic value in software comes from use. So you use software to do something and you don't sell it per se. That means also if you are a coder, you don't really earn because you sell what you coded, but because someone else who has an interest that you code just paid you to code something. May it be a website, may it be a certain service or provision internally. Um, if there are competitive, let's say, um, firms who offer a service, then if they both use free software, then they see, oh, this guy wrote this piece, we can hire him. And then the other firms say, no, we want to hire him. And therefore, people who write free software do have very good jobs. Um, if you think illegally, then um, patents, that's just nothing else but a monopoly. You say, I came up with the idea, even if that's not entirely true, because you can never say somebody else before you didn't have the same idea, and then forbid anybody else for a term of 20 years to really not have the same idea, not use it. Even if you don't know about the patent, you can still be sued for it. So there are certain legislations where the software can be patented, and this is really, really bad, and you have to keep an eye on the future of Europe. And now I want to come to the main part, which is usually the introduction of other talks like this. But I like to use this as a kind of conclusion, how software should be. It's the definition of the Free Software Foundation. And it should always have all four freedoms to be passed on for the user. So you are, run, you are free to run the program for any purpose you like. This, this might, might sound very obvious, but trust me, it's not. Because in most licenses you have, to, you may run the, this to do this and that and for nothing else. Or then even a hilarious example would be you're not allowed to use the software in a nu nuclear power plant. This would be and just forbid something. Or a very, very negative way which doesn't exist in the real world would be just, just I, I don't like those, those people from this country, nationality, X, Y, Z, you can't use this software, it's forbidden. That, that's actually it's, it's a real example, it's not a fake one. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I know that the, the, the software foundation says this is evil, but uh, one could argue that you know, people is not nice to it. Hmm. So it's not necessarily evil to uh, yep. forbid a certain use of software, I guess. To forbid it. Yeah. So but if you leak a military piece. But mm, what I said with, with the word evil was just a monopoly on the public good. That's, I have a certain way of doing things and I'm the only one who can provide this, although everybody else could theoretically do the same. It's just, think of uh, generic drugs in India. It's a very good comparison because there you also have a medicine drug license patenting and it holds for a certain area, and there are exceptions that Indian people can produce spin-offs, so imitates, and sell them on their own market. However, they are forbidden by law to export. So this is then, you see, you find a middle way between they are actually violating the patent by producing, but they still can do this. 
Um, yeah, it's, it's an issue that covers many areas. Uh, anyway, let, let me finish because I I'm think I'm over time. Um, freedom one, yeah, you're free to study the program. This is what most people understand when they see open source and change it so you can do your computing as you wish. Think of a software that does something very useful, but it doesn't support your goddamn printer. So you have to add the support yourself, it's not possible, or pay someone to do it for you. And if it's not open source, it's a very, very hard thing to do. It's not impossible, but it's hard. Um, yeah, this is how it should be. The user should also control the software, not the other way around. This is something I already uh, mentioned before. Uh, it's, it's quite obvious, but today it's, it's usually vice versa. You think of uh, modern mobiles. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to talk about it actually. Freedom too, quite important as well. You're free to distribute copies, it can help your neighbor. This is uh, something I also mentioned in the main part of the talk, that sharing does not harm most of things like ideas, techniques, stories, melodies, images. If I tell you about something that doesn't hurt it, and anyone who wants to make you believe otherwise is just plainly lying to you. Um, on the contrary, yeah, sharing keeps those things, ideas, techniques, stories, melodies, keeps them alive. Uh, source code, software, technique is nothing else than uh, uh, a work of authorship. Uh, you are free to distribute copies, this is freedom three, of your modified version to others, which wouldn't make any much sense if you are, have the freedom to modify something and then you, you really can't distribute it because there is, as soon as you do it, someone else will notice and say, oh, you modified this version, it's a commercial product, no, you can get sued. This is uh, also not ideal. So this freedom free should be preserved. Uh, of course, access to source code as freedom too also is a pre um, pregatory for this, <laughs> no, preliminary. Openness of source, this is actually should be a title, open source above it. The openness of source is less decisive when one or more of the freedoms is formally or effectively taken away. What good is it if we have a completely open source system in a computer-like box, a box that is factually a computer, but it's locked down in a way you can't access it inside. So it's filled with software, you have the right to change, but you can't actually change it because you can't open the box. This is TiVo, and this is why the GPL version 3 matters. There are people like Linus Torvalds who are strongly against uh, GPL version 3, and also for the Linux kernel, we still have version 2, so th th he is of the opinion that people should be able to do is sell boxes with free software inside, and then so what? You can't change it. It just uh, makes it a bit more practical. Uh, I'm of uh, Stallman's opinion. It should be accessible. And it always is, but it's a legal issue. <laughs> um, yeah, that is uh, basically it. Oh, open source, yeah. It was, in the past, open source was actually coined to avoid misunderstandings, because if you say free, most people think gratuit, and that's wrong. We have the GPL issued by the FSF. Uh, it's uh, copyleft, restrictive, and enforces all four freedoms. So copyleft means it takes, it is actually a copyright, but it, normally you have it to take away freedoms or to say rights, this is my right, this is not your right. And copyleft turns copyright against itself by saying you have those rights, but you have to conserve those rights as well. Uh, some people, uh, bad mouth tongue, call it a uh, viral license as well. It, it has those uh, properties, but because it's about the freedom of the user, it's very important to enforce those freedoms downstream, that's what it's called. Um, BSD license is also a very nice free software license, very commonly used. Um, I think Mac OS X is uh, based on a lot of software from, uh, which is licensed under BSD. Um, it's a non-copyleft license, so it's more <coughs> permissive. You can do more with the, with the stuff you like. You can even take away the rights. This is why, in uh, my opinion, then, it's a bad thing to be allowed to
take away rights from, uh, from users of this software then. You know, we have uh, patents, not patente, how it says there. Okay, no, my slides are actually over. I have some examples down here. Um, Amazon Kindle, iPhone, Skype, you can ask any questions about those because I believe those are perfect examples uh, of bad, malicious software anyone should avoid. A um, very, very important issue I haven't touched on upon is proprietary data formats. Proprietary data formats uh, should be avoided as well. And then if you were at the Linux install party last week and you install Ubuntu the first time, it will ask you, do you want to add support for MP3? And anyone in their non-nerdy minds would say, you've seen, in this, seen this the first time, oh my god, what is this? How useful would a computer be without MP3 support? And then this must be a very shitty system because it doesn't support MP3 out of the box. Uh, actually, it's MP3's fault because it's a patent and format. Yeah? It's not possible for the distributors to distribute something to bundle it, the support, with the operating system and distribute it in every country. It's just not possible legally. So it's actually MP3's fault and it's not operating system's fault, but luckily Ubuntu supports it very nice, so you can click it and use it. Um, that was my talk. If you have any question, it would be nice to ask him now. Please no more uh, mil military drones, because I am really not an expert in that. And otherwise, uh, you can ask me.